Good morning, you're welcome to The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. My name is Rume Paulson. And I am Yangu Agadi. Welcome to a brand new day, Thursday day. Why are you asking? No, I'm <laughs> <laughs> you're scared? <laughs> Thursday the 15th of okay. August. Alright, I would have been right. Eh? <laughs> 15th of August 2024 and we're glad that uh, we could make it this far. Welcome again to The Breakfast. Yes, welcome to The Breakfast. On today's breakfast show, we'll be discussing several hot topics, one of which Northern Elders oppose new constitution calls for Tinubu's impeachment. Another says, I get paid 21 million naira monthly, can a senator reveals. We'll also be taking global stories that made it to the front pages of our national dailies this morning, as well as some top trending stories. But first, let's check out our quote of the day. Success usually comes to those who are too busy to be looking for it. And that is by Henry David Thoreau. He's an American transcendentalist author. And he says this morning, success usually comes to those who are too busy to be looking for it. Yamkola, I'd like to get your take. Yeah, it's like one of the quotes that I, I, I heard from one of the movies that um, your destiny often lies on the road you take to avoid it. You know, you're mm. running away from That's it deep. and that is, <laughs> that is where you go and meet your destiny. The thing mm -hmm. is that uh, just do your bit, don't kill yourself. When, mm -hmm. If it is yours, it will come to you mm -hmm. so long as you put the right things in place. You don't need to you know, break the world for mm -hmm. it. You don't need mm -hmm. to uh, climb on people's heads or, or bring people down and all that before you get your success. You're just busy doing your thing and things will fall in place. Exactly. That's what I understand. I think this is a very deep course. Very. Uh, you have to really think about it very. Um, very well for you to understand it. And honestly, I kind of agree because mm -hmm. if, you're, if you're saying, I want to be successful, I want to be successful, a lot of times you might just be doing the wrong thing. Yeah. <laughs> and you would never really get that success that you're looking for. And for me, as someone who has dealt with anxiety in the past, mm -hmm. that is even what brings anxiety because you're like, I need to make it. I have a timeline. Um, I have these dates. I feel like I should have you know, gotten all of these things. I personally, I felt like by 30, I should have built my first house. Mm -hmm. I should have been married with all the kids i should have had this thriving jets, if you like. <laughs> <laughs> thriving successful career i had a lot of expectations um you know for myself and don't get me wrong it's good to have goals and dreams and expectations but you need to understand that your timeline is so different from another person's own mm -hmm. and you cannot set it because life is not yours you're not the one that's going to tell life what it throws at you all mm -hmm. you're going to do is try to avoid some curveballs so in fact it was just wishful thinking really um saying i wanted to achieve all of these things the house the kids the cars the luxury lifestyle i wanted it before 30 but guess what i'm way over 30 mm -hmm. and i do not have it right now but that is what um this quote kind of says if you're if you're going to be so anxious trying to drive or get something you might not just get it so success um in that word if you're looking for it too much, killing yourself, saying if it does not happen, I'm going to die. Well, I'm sorry. 
the most that careful, might not just happen for you. The most careful students are the ones that break the test tubes in, mm. the, in the laboratories mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because they're they're too careful and it, it brings that anxiety yes, to them, yes. and then they end up messing up the things that they they want to avoid. Yeah. So don't be too anxious. Mm -hmm. You see, if you are you're walking on the road and you pick a feather from the road. You, you wouldn't believe that that feather has a connection to everything that happens in the entire world. Mm -hmm. There is some kind of mm -hmm. connection. Yeah. So that if you go back in time and never pick that uh, feather, mm. the, the, the trend of events will change. Would definitely. It will change. So you don't own your life, like mm -hmm. you said. Mm -hmm. Everything is connected. So you move with the tide, do your bit, and hope that the best will fall in place. If it mm -hmm. doesn't fall in place, That's sometimes okay you just find too. out that that road you took that you do not like is the one destined for you. Yes. So everything I, you have achieved at 30 or beyond may have been something you didn't even think about, yeah. but it's been a success story somewhat. Yeah, exactly. You know? And it has made me the person that I am today. And if you're too, if you're always saying, oh, I do not want to make a mistake, most times a lot of inventions that is being done in the world are mistakes. Are, they're from mistakes. So if you're busy looking for that one big thing, that success, if you're not making mistakes in other ways, you would not learn that would now, you know, change the trajectory of things to move you to a different place. So in a nutshell, you, we all know that we want to be successful, but do not kill yourself about it. Don't be too busy looking for success. Be busy trying to live your life. Mm -hmm. Be busy trying to take in everything. And when I say everything, I mean even the challenges that you you yeah. faced along the, the way. The learning curve. Yes. Be busy to say, okay, you know what? How can I make this different? How can I make my life better? Self-development, personal development is key to being a successful person. But if you're saying, I just want that success, guess what? You might not really get it. But if you start to develop yourself, if you have that personal, that reflection every time and say, you know what? This is what I've done in X, Y, Z amount of days. I want days. to give you a podium. For me to be a speaker yeah. right now. <laughs> but yes, you get what I mean. Um, you know, that personal development is what will make you get that success that you're looking for. So do not kill yourself thinking you want to um, be a successful person. You'll be a successful person. You'll be person. jumping some, some stages that you should have yes, taken Yes, that you should have because, learned yes. from. So I'll make you into easy. that person. The success will come to you. Exactly. And the greatest success, I might add, is um, the success of telling yourself, that you are the only one who can make yourself happy. Exactly. Not comparing yourself with another person and mm -hmm. all that. Success is what you define for yourself. Mm -hmm. There are people who just want to make others happy and it makes them happy. Yeah. If I, I go to a club, for instance, now, mm -hmm. uh, my greatest happiness will see others dancing and just being happy. Mm -hmm. I'll just sit and be looking at them because <laughs> I have two left legs, as they say. <laughs> they say. But, you know, that is for me. So yeah. I will feel fulfilled yeah. that I'm seeing others happy. Mm -hmm. That is me. I can't define that as the success that everybody else has, would be yeah. thinking success, about, the happiness. I, I don't think success be can be about. defined as the money in your bank account. There is no... Success no. should be defined at, at you know, as The amount of feel. happiness you have. Yes. The satisfaction, you know, the people the that you've impacted you have. their lives. You know, where you are, the stage you are in life. Not just saying, oh, I have all the money, I have all the cars, and I'm boiling. No, that is not success. But yes, our quote today... So many today, people boil and then go back to cry. So <laughs> success, wealth generally is measured according to how much satisfaction you have out of it. Mm. That is all. There are some people who live in that one room and you look at them, there's very poor happy, people. They're successful. They're so happy, they laugh all day. Mm -hmm. How many times have you laughed the last, in the last one yeah. week? Like really laughed. But you and I, I know we're dwelling on this a little, a little longer than we usually would for our cause. But I feel like our generation, you know, we've turned success into something else. It's just money. Yes, we've, and it's quite sad because we need a rejig of our minds to understand that success is not about money. I know that everybody wants to live that lifestyle, especially on the gram. But it is important that you define success how you deem it fit. Not just saying other people are living their lives and we always want to be competitive with others. But you need to understand that your own timeline is different. Your own road is different. Your own journey is entirely different. So what path is going to lead you to that success? That's what you should be looking for. Not measuring your success by the world standard. All right, let's move over to our top trending stories this morning. The first one says a federal high court sitting in Abuja has sacked 16 members of the Ebony State House of Assembly who defected from the People's Democratic Party, PDP, to the All Progressive Congress, APC. David Umahi, the state governor and his deputy, had in November 2020 left the PDP and joined the APC. Umahi had attributed his defection to the injustice done to the Southeast. 
The lawmakers on November 17, 2020 joined Umahi and Eric Igwe, deputy governor, to move over to the APC. The court, in its judgment delivered on Tuesday, held that the legislators could not transfer the mandate they received from the ballots to another political party after abandoning the political party that had sponsored them. In Yang Ekwo, the judge held that the defendants who were elected into the House of Assembly on the platform of the PDP could not justify their defection when, they were, when there was no division in the PDP. Consequently, Ekwo ordered that the lawmakers to vacate their positions with immediate effect. He restrained them from further parading themselves or acting as members of a Boeing State Assembly. The court also directed INEC to conduct a fresh election in Eboin State to fill the vacant positions within 90 days. I think this is a no-brainer. That is how it's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. I don't think you should, you know, be elected in one party and then you wake up one day and say, oh, no, I do not like my party. I'm going to move to another party, especially when there is no um, rancor per se, right? Or um, maybe a court has not approved that. But you cannot expect to be elected in one party and you still want to move to another party and still have the privileges or the benefits that comes with that same um, position that you have. I wish, I wish that um, there was this law that once you move and your, your position is taken away, the next uh, highest uh, person she takes your position. Up. Because right now, how many months have they stayed there? That means they have gathered enough money from the state coffers mm. because they are the ones in charge now, paying mm. themselves humongous salaries. Because mm -hmm. as it happens in the national, that's how it happens in the state. So which means they have gathered so much money, uh, taxpayers' money, that they will use now to fight for the position because nothing disqualifies them from contesting mm. again mm. Uh, for that position. So they will now say, okay, we are now in a new party mm. and then we are going to contest. So they will use state funds, which are at their disposal, to contest. For so, me, for me, I even feel like I wish they, going they to could do... be disqualified or the next person yes. who was the highest yes. takes it. Yes, or, um, you know, since it was the PDP, I feel like a lot of times we, we use the people, not the party. In the sense that if it was the party that won, if it was the party's ticket, then whatever election that should be done again, the fresh elections, should be, should be a party. party. Exactly. Because the ticket should be to the party and not to the people. And that's the reason why you're seeing people who come, um, you know, into office and they want to do everything that by themselves. They want to say, oh, I built this road. Oh, I built this school. Because they're not even thinking of their party. They, they, there's no proper manifesto that they bring to the forefront for the people to say, oh, okay, yes, this is what this party is doing. Instead, they wanted that this is what David Lagbaja is doing. Mm. So a lot of times we're removing the party, we're removing the things that we expect a party as a body should be doing. When you go to the ballot boxes, most of the time they tell you who are you voting, APC, PDP, NNPP, Labour Party. That is how it should be, not, oh, I'm voting for one um, Kwan Kwa So, yeah, so, whatever, so whatever. PDP won, like you said, PDP mm -hmm. won. Now that these people have left the PDP, give it back to the, to the PDP. PDP. Well, that is not what the law is, but there should be some kind of fairness. Let these people know that once you leave, that is it. So even if it doesn't happen that way, let these particular people who leave be disqualified. disqualified. You or the cannot next come person, back again. if it was, it, it was NNPP, that was the next, uh, if you had 100 votes, NNPP had 90, and then third person had less than that. Let him take the position. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. now, like I said, they have gathered all the money. They knew this might come. Mm -hmm. So they must have been gathering of money. Of course, they've been preparing of their for it. People. And then, but I just wonder what the, the Port Harcourt people are thinking right now. Mm. Oh, it's about to come to us. <laughs> <laughs> but next. it has already happened, but mm -hmm. they are still thinking that they are, they are there and mm -hmm. they could take that matter to another place. It just, was just affirmed by the new... Not new, I don't even know how to describe that. The, the chairman of APC now mm -hmm. that... Uh, they are members of the APC. So even then, even when it was still shaky, like mm. maybe they were not members, he has affirmed that they are members now. And unfortunately, the person who was making the loudest noise in River State uh, was a caretaker committee chairman fighting caretaker committee set by the governor, and now he has been That's removed from That's office. It's just a lot in River State <laughs> and all that. But That's it's a, a good thing that this has happened. Yeah. Let the law take its course. It's justice. Cost. Let people know that... Um, once you run away, you should stay where away. you went to. <laughs> <laughs> you stay away. No pro prodigal son in in um, in in, in, in politics. politics. Yeah. Uh, the prodigal son should be that you abandon everything you went to meet mm. 
and mm -hmm. then you're coming to start afresh. So mm -hmm. you come back to the party afresh. Not yeah. that, okay, now I've decided I'm coming back to PDP, so you can't mm -hmm. take my position. Mm -hmm. It doesn't happen. Anyway, Governor Aba Yusuf of Kano State, uh, this is very funny to me, mm. uh, has said that miscreants who vandalized the Kano State High Court during the August 1st nationwide protest in the state have cut away documents containing corruption charges filed against the former governor of the state, Abdullahi Umar Ganduje, who has been facing multiple charges before the state high court. Governor Yusuf stated this when he paid an on-the-spot assessment visit to the Kano State High Court, which was vandalized by thugs who hijacked the nationwide protest a few days ago. In a statement made by the governor's spokesperson, Sanusi Baturi, quoted the governor describing the vandalization of the court as a masterminded and state-managed mission in which the hired miscreants carted away the documents to shield the former governor, his family, and aides from trial. The governor assured that judiciary as the uh, last hope of the common man must be protected at all costs. He therefore directed for the immediate rehabilitation of the building with immediate effect and deployment of adequate security for effective justice delivery. al Haji Abakabir commended the people of the state for their support and cooperation to the present administration and prayed for the sustenance of the temple for peace, stability, prosperity and economic development. When I read this story yesterday, I was just laughing. Somebody said, Otilo. Because I'm like, wait, <laughs> how do you nothing. guys sit down, <laughs> think about this, cook up the stories, and just say, okay, this is what's happening. There are two things. It's either it is true or it is a lie. So it's either maybe some people decided to hijack the protest, if it's true now. Some people decided to hijack the protest because they're like, oh, now is the best time mm -hmm. to go and get all of those documents out. Or some people are just there and saying, um, let's just let the governor know that this is what has happened. Meanwhile, that is not even true. So I'm like, how do we come up with this? Like, are we really... See, we're in a digital age, right? We have technology right now. You cannot tell me that every file you have is still hard copy, is still paper. In 2024, then you're telling me that all of the evidence that you have, like, if you have evidence, is it only one in one place? that you will have it. There's no multiple, I have a lot of questions, as you can tell, yeah. because this makes no sense to me. It's just sad. Um, well, but like you said, technology. Before now, salaries were paid by hand. Mm -hmm. They will bring the cash to the, to the local government, for instance, and then pay people mm -hmm. by hand. And then there was technology. I remember in my state when, when the governor was about to introduce this, who was about the first person to introduce this, Donald Duke then, yeah. uh, everybody was, was like, no, this man, they were fighting him because they didn't want I'm that kind of change. This, they were fighting yeah. him because there must be uh, some change left. You are paid a uh, hundred uh, and twenty naira, no twenty naira change, no day. Collect your hundred naira mm. and go and they were making bastard money. And then it was always the treasury that was getting burnt all the time. When you hear fire in a mm. local government, it is the treasury that will mm. be burnt. And all the money was burnt with it and oh all that. It, it was always happening. But now, it's electronic. Mm -hmm. Nobody hears about that anymore. Mm -hmm. So go technological. I don't know why you're still doing what you're doing now. It makes no sense. There's a judgment in one court. The next court, you know, cannot even know what, what happened because there is no network. There's no yeah. connection. With the, You're not sharing information. We are too big to be in that position. Mm. But Ganduji, Otilo, your, your case has gone well, home. Mm. <laughs> I'm not saying say no more. Let's hope that this is not the end. Yes, let's yeah. hope that there's something... If, although in Nigeria, but it means you, that you it, never it know. really means that the evidences were very, very much and for very damning for someone to take yes. that kind of step, step to, go exactly. and, to go and break the, to hijack. Because yeah, I saw the I saw videos from you know the protests um, in Kanu and we saw all that happened. So it's possible that it was hijacked, or it's possible that someone that someone somewhere what is, lying. What is possible? Up stories possible is us. not even it because. All the protests we've seen, people were looting things. They were not looting books. Do documents. So, so why would you go why and loot documents? Why would I loot a document? Except you were sent, exactly. particularly. So that's what I'm saying. Someone was sent to hijack, you know, mm -hmm. they hijacked the protest mm -hmm. so that they can do this. Mm -hmm. To have, uh, to have the leeway, to have the avenue well, to go and pick it up. Go explain or no evidence, someone so. somewhere is just lying that, oh yes, when that happened, this 
this was taken away. So it's still just don't make no sense. It makes no sense. All right, our final top trending stories talks about um, incessant killings in Ondo State and women have gone into the streets naked. Now, it says some aggrieved women in the Uba Oka Akoko community of Akoko Southwest local government area of Ondo State have staged a peaceful protest to condemn the incessant killings by suspected herdsmen in the area, calling on the government to salvage them from the invaders. Their clamor follows the recent murder of a farmer called Sunday Ayeni on his farm in the community. The corpse of Ayeni was found on his farm with machete wounds and his intestines exposed, indicating that he was brutally stabbed to death by his attackers. During the protest, the women who were half naked and without head ties trekked to the palace of their traditional ruler of Oka Akoko Oba Adebori Adeleye chanting various solidarity songs. The protesters also accused the herdsmen of raping women on their farmlands and destroying their crops. Speaking on behalf of the protesting women, Abigail Ojo narrated their ordeal, stating that they had practically abandoned their farms due to the fear of being attacked by the herdsmen. Ojo stated thus, we call on security agencies to help find lasting solutions to our problems. We're protesting to let the government know our plight. This is quite unfortunate. I mean, we took this story um, a few weeks ago about Sunday Ayeni that was um, brutally killed on his farm. And he had, as, as at that time, he had just received um, some money. I think he had just received some, some funds in and then he was, he was being killed. And I think uh, this is something that we cannot even stop talking about, insecurity. Insecurity is a major issue in our community, in Nigeria as a whole. We're, say, we're talking about food not being you know, in our marketplaces or being so expensive. That's because farmers cannot go to their farms. And that's what these women are saying. They are going to their farms. They are being raped. Some of them are being killed. They're, they, can't, they can't even go anymore because they feel like the herdsmen will come for them. And I feel like at the end of the day, if you are a government official, your, your thinking should be, how can we make sure that Nigeria is safe for everyone? not just for some people. I mean, for us in the urban areas, we feel like, oh, you can't touch us. But for people in the rural areas, they're also our brothers and our sisters. You have so many of, um, of your cousins or your relatives that probably are not living in the urban cities. They're living in the villages. And guess what? You don't even know when you're going to get a call that someone has been killed. Till it gets to your house, it doesn't mean that it's not happening somewhere else. So, if we're going to really, you know, look for ways to even better our economy, if we're not tackling insecurity, we're still joking right now. And it's quite unfortunate. And I mean, I said this before, I'll say it again. My heart goes out to his family. But it's quite unfortunate that things like this are happening. And we're not seeing, maybe the government is doing a little, but we're not seeing, we're not seeing what we expect. We're not seeing them do so much when it comes to insecurity in our nation. I think all of us have to uh, rise up to the occasion. The government will be doing this. We will be doing our especially the media i think yeah. we should just even stop calling these people headsmen or a criminal is a criminal yeah. let him just be a criminal let it not be like there's a particular ethnic group that does this there's a particular profession that does this mm. there are headsmen that are very good very True. good True. you go to the bush they will be the ones to protect you even if you cry out and all that yeah. so it is not a headsman thing it's a criminal thing those people should be called criminals. We shouldn't say Fulani headsmen or Ijof mm. headsmen or anything. They are criminals. And then another thing is that I think the security agencies are, are leaving the root of the matter. Now, a lot of these killings are assassinations. And assassinations don't just come mm. because somebody wants to kill. Somebody will send another yes. person to go and kill yes. in most cases. So assassinations... Like have people case, who are sponsoring he, he, he it. So go speaking. after these people, get them arrested, find out who sent them. Mm -hmm. Then some of these killings are for ritual purposes because mm -hmm. they kill them, sever some of their parts and take to ritualists. The ritualists themselves don't go to the bush. They send people. So mm -hmm. if you trace it, you'll get to these people and who are doing you, this. Someone so, can trace your call. So right you can, so you why can you kill, not doing something you can about kill it? one person now who has been sent by one big man mm -hmm. and then uh, you think that is all over. But you've forgotten that that big man can still another recruit person. another person. Mm -hmm. And it continues like that. So I think 
It's a holistic thing if you want to fight insecurity, get to the root of the matter. I am happy anytime they say, oh, we've gone down this uh, kidnapper or this and that. But I, I still ask myself, if you've gone down that person, how much information did you get from that person to make sure you get to the root of the mm, matter? True. So, and then the police should make sure that we trust them. Mm -hmm. Because right now, if I find somebody I'm who is a potential kidnapper or anything, I may not come out with the information yeah. because you roped me in. Mm -hmm. We've seen so many cases like that. Even some people who are invited to the police station, okay, you go, you want to go and give statements. Statement. They dictate what you are supposed to say. Mm. Some people go to escort their friends that have been invited by police. They are also <laughs> roped in. Things are happening. It's crazy. So that's why insecurity is very, very... Um, it's sad and unfortunate. It's, it's a sad thing in Nigeria. And yeah. if it has reached the point where women go half naked, in every society in Nigeria, when it gets to that, it is extreme. That is, yes, it's exactly. It's extreme. So if something is not done, you know, the gods themselves will rise. Mm. Well, hopefully they do something about it. And um, we're just tackling the root cause of the matter, like you said. All right, we'll go on a short break. We'll review the weather. Rather, we'll look at the weather. And when we return, we'll be reviewing the papers. Please stay with us. <laughs>